At his age, he can come here, a local anti-aging clinic, one of hundreds that have recently sprung up across the country. Doctors prescribe testosterone to men with low levels of the hormone, which typically diminishes as they age. This is 200 milligrams of testosterone. It's called hormone replacement therapy. Over the 40 years that you've been using, how many people do you know personally that have used anabolics? 2,500. 2,500 that I just absolutely know. In other words, I did the following. I observed it, I injected it, I went to prison for it. Of those 2,500, any of them have any heart, kidney, liver, health problems? And I was able to follow through their lifetimes or up to these points or any point thereof, none. Look, some people will get away with it. Uh, some people will rob a bank and never get caught. Dr. Gary Wadler is one of the most respected and outspoken critics of anabolic steroid use, repeatedly testifying before Congress on the issue. I'm looking for the bodies, looking for this health scourge that people talk about, and frankly, we can't find it. The trouble with steroid-related deaths, the trouble with steroid-related coronary events, there's no tell-tale marker that you do an autopsy and say, aha, there is the signature of steroid abuse. Would you give it to me that there aren't a lot of specific connections to these drugs and health risks? A lot of anecdotal information, a lot of supposition, but direct scientific evidence? Because of what we know it does do to clotting, to cholesterol, to heart muscle, to coronary arteries, I take the position that we have to be extra cautious. Wadler says between the impact on cholesterol, rise in blood pressure, and the mood swings, these are dangerous drugs. And Wadler points to an earlier pill version of the drug, no longer widely used. Turns out those were linked to potential liver problems. To him, it all spells trouble. I'm just trying to find the science. In my judgment, giving long-term steroids for a non-medical indication to see what might happen is a study that I don't think should be done. So if not one long-term study exists, how did we get to where we are today? From a one-time miracle drug used to combat anemia and wasting diseases in the 1940s and 50s to an illegal drug in 1990. Many people point to this moment at the 1988 Olympics when the public perception began to shift. When Canadian Ben Johnson beat America's golden boy, Carl Lewis, in the 100 meters, and then tested positive for steroids. In the wake of the cheating scandal, Congress took action. Steroid abuse uh, is already a problem in America. They passed the Anabolic Steroids Control Act in 1990, classifying the drugs as Schedule III controlled substances, despite the fact that the American Medical Association the Department of Health and Human Services, and the Drug Enforcement Agency all oppose the move. Oh. And within months, the crowning blow, the ravages of steroid abuse, finally had a face. One of pro football's true warriors, Lyle Elzado, suddenly appeared decimated and frail on NBC News, claiming steroid use had led to brain cancer. It got me where I wanted, but also got me very sick. Less than a year later, Alzado was dead the death of Lyle Elzado. What impact did that have? Huge. I mean, I think he is the, the poster child for the evils of steroids and uh, the wages of sin. Uh, it just turns out it's wrong. That's right. Ask any steroid expert and they'll tell you Alzado did not die from steroid use. Even Alzado's own doctor confirmed to Real Sports, quote, there is no known association between Alzado's death and his use of steroids. Whatever the public hysteria at the time, privately guys like John Romano and Bob Clapp weren't buying into the dangers of these drugs, and they still don't. Let's just deal with the long-term health risks associated with anabolic steroids. In your mind, are there any? There's one side effect that is there for absolutely sure, is they work. They absolutely work. They work profoundly. And you know, you look good, you feel good. I mean, the sense of well-being is unbelievable. I just don't think we play Russian roulette this way. I think it's, a, it's absolutely a form of Russian roulette, which is unjustifiable Russian roulette. John, we talked back and forth about long-term health risks. 
How do we know there aren't any? Well, you know, that, that's, that's true, except for the fact that there's an awful lot of guys that have been using steroids for 20 or 30 years that, that are perfectly healthy, vibrant examples of what responsible, intelligent use of these very powerful drugs can do. Armin, the first question is pretty obvious. In the absence of, of health damage, how do you explain the uproar? Well, it's, it's a lot of anecdotal evidence. Brian, I think that's the way you have to look at it. Certainly, something like deaths, for example, there have been about a dozen supposedly linked in some fashion or form. Supposedly. Right, to, to uh, anabolic steroid use. We've done the research. We talked to the chief researcher who happens to be at the U.S. Army, who has gone through all the case reports, um, came up with about a dozen, but they are not definitively linked to steroids in any way. So there is a lot of anecdotal evidence on both sides here. I think what we've been trying to do in this piece is just to move that pendulum back a little bit yeah. more towards the center. Your personal history on this is, is, is yeah. very revealing also because Absolutely. you've been writing and reporting about this for years and you were as guilty as anyone. Absolutely. I, in fact, I think if people are pointing fingers, they could certainly point them back in my direction dating back to my days at Sports Illustrated in the mid-1980s when I was reporting this story. And frankly, when it was presented to me this time, I went, what? There are no long-term studies on anabolic steroids? There are. The, the DEA and the AMA were resistant to them becoming controlled substances. So, yes, the answer is I've learned a lot in this story as well. Yeah. We should also note that we're talking here about healthy adult males. Yes. When we talk about young males and women, yes. it changes considerably. Right. We were very careful in this piece to narrow it down to healthy adult men. When you talk about kids, you've got issues with growth plates, you've got emotional, serious emotional issues. And when you talk about women, you're talking about the male hormone, not estrogen, but testosterone, and some serious questions involving use of testosterone, certainly by females. Yeah, real eye-opener here. Me too, man. Armin, thanks very much.